Thank you for joining us. I'm in conversation with the CEO of ICICI Bank, Chanda Kocher. Chanda, many thanks for joining us today. Uh, let me start with you about asking about your own assessment of growth. The Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council pegs growth to be at about 6.7%. The Reserve Bank of India yesterday says growth will perhaps be the same as the previous year. What is your own understanding of how growth is likely to pan out? I think the growth would be somewhere in that range of 6 to 6.5 um, because I think there's still the consumption momentum that is driving the growth. Uh, what we are losing out is entirely the momentum on account of, you know, lack or slowdown of uh, investments. Mm. But, uh, you know, we have to just say that we are pretty fortunate that we have the consumption momentum mm. that can still give us uh, this kind of growth. The Reserve Bank of India, ma'am, in its report, puts the ball back in the government's court and it says you need to be taking fiscal measures to ensure growth comes back on track. What do you think the government needs to be doing to win back investor confidence, to bring back business confidence? I think, uh, you know, the three, four things which, uh, in my view, are, you know, to be done here and now, uh, if we have to bring back confidence from across the communities, whether it's investment, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, the outside world. Uh, one is uh, clearly actually improving the whole sentiment around investments uh, and there uh, you know we have to get some of the existing projects up and moving I mean we have a lot of investments that have actually fructified in the last many years or a couple of years uh, you have so much of power capacity that has been built but you know finally not becoming productive either because coal is not available or the final environmental clearances for the mines are not available and so on so I think this is one set of executive decision making uh, that should be done to actually get the projects finally to see the productive uh, light of the day. Sure. Uh, the second is that uh, we have to have a very clear path on the fiscal consolidation. So right now I'm not even debating the numbers as such. I think right now what is most important is uh, you know, can we very clearly say this is what we believe the number is going to be mm -hmm. and you know, this, this, this will be done to get to that number and this, this, this cannot be done. So we are not counting it in getting to that number. So we need a much bigger clarity first to start with on, on the fiscal deficit side. And the third is uh, really to get, uh, you know, uh, much more clarity on this whole tax and the retrospective uh, I issue. I think if we just arrive at some of these clarities, uh, you know, you would see some amount of confidence coming back. I think the bigger parliamentary debates about uh, FDI and so on uh, can happen on the side. But to me, uh, these here and now, now issues are more important. I want to ask you about corporate investment spending. The investment has been extremely weak. Uh, numbers we all know, money raised by corporates for fresh investments is down nearly 50% year on year. We have seen the global liquidity tap open up a wee bit. Are you seeing any evidence of investment outlook getting better? See, the global liquidity is actually there. I mean, uh, you know, and, and everybody is watching India. But uh, the fact that money is not coming in as much as, as it ought to is not because of liquidity really, but is on account of that lack of clarity of the environment in India. So uh, I think, again, it goes back to this that we have to um, really bring about much more clarity in mm. terms of what the investment environment in India is. I mean, are we saying that we want projects to move? If that is so, then will we make sure that land is available, clearances are available and so on and so forth? Mm. Will we make sure that we will not go back and reopen contracts or, you know, uh, look at taxes in a retrospective manner? Mm. So I think it is currently more taking out the uncertainties, clarifying the playing field, and then ensuring that we just move on that direction. I want to talk about inflation interest rates, Chanda. Uh, we have seen marginal moderation in consumer prices and marginal moderation in wholesale prices as well. Do you believe this gives the Reserve Bank some leeway to be cutting interest rates? I think the inflation uh, correction has been pretty marginal, so to say. So uh, I guess uh, your uh, Reserve Bank will keep looking at uh, not just that, but the liquidity situation in the country and so on. I, I can only say that so far they've been doing a very, very good balancing act uh, in, in, you know, in trying to meet uh, or balance these multiple objectives uh, or, or challenges, whichever way you may call it. Mm. Uh, but in my view, again, if you were to link it to the investment climate, I would say that, uh, you know, today the investment climate is not dependent that much on interest rates as it is 
on the other you know facilitative environment so which is the point that reserve bank also is making that even if you lower rates things are not going to change much. yeah so i mean it's always good to have lower interest rates i think that's a that's a very you know added positive factor to uh, to the growth in the economy but i think today the constraints are you know much larger and and therefore uh, something that can trigger the change is really more uh, you know for us to first make the environment facilitative just the point about inflation chanda are we going to see a prolonged period of high inflation deficient monsoons maybe the last leg is made up for the deficiency specifically food price uh, are we going to be living in a phase where you're going to see prices stay high for a long time to come you know we should look at inflation uh, in a more holistic manner and not just related to the monsoons if you look at state by state many states are quite comfortable yes right. there are other states which have a you know which which will have a bigger deficit but then amongst those deficit states also we have states like punjab and haryana where thankfully irrigation is uh, you know can make up uh, for for some of that deficit so i think overall uh, you know while monsoon look to be a much bigger problem i think the size of the problem is getting getting smaller uh, so it's not that going to be that bigger contributor to inflation sure. but in general i think we are going to see inflation remaining high in our economy for some time for the sheer reason that consumption growth is exceeding production growth or capacity creation growth so in a way this is fall out of our demographic dividend to say that we have people who are earning who want to consume who are aspiring and therefore there is demand now what we need to do in a country like this is to actually back it up with continuing to create capacity sure and and that is where uh, you know then um, uh, that is that is really the that's more happening. sustainable way of controlling inflation that's I not happening say. fast enough yeah that's not happening fast enough i want to shift focus now to the uh, the banking industry we are now talking at a time when asset quality concerns are hogging the headlines every other day what's your own view on 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 asset quality concerns for the industry as a whole see uh, one thing is for sure that uh, you know whatever happens uh, in the economy as a whole uh, i think in every which way impacts the banking sector because uh, the banking sector rides on on the on the economic environment uh but having said that i just believe that um, currently the kind of perception about the asset quality of the banking sector is probably over exaggerated so uh, so we don't have any problems <laughs> no i would say the problems are not as as uh, acute as uh, i i think the perception is so 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 let me put it like this i mean uh, is there a problem about some projects getting delayed yes there is there are projects that are getting delayed there are projects that even if they uh, are complete uh, you know are probably not operating at their desired capacity because some linkage or the other is not yet fully come so i think those those kind of issues are there that means we have to monitor those projects we have to see what needs to be done but i think the bigger issue is that in a growth economy like ours you know when you look at a project period of 15 years or so i think a one or 18 one year or a 18 month Uh, you know postponement in cash flows does not really make those projects npas for their life sure. so we have to remember that we are actually living in a growth economy and the issues that arise uh, of this kind uh, are of course issues for an immediate term but they uh, they generally the projects get worked out over the longer period and and okay. that is that is i think that is what i mean by saying that the worries are are a little over exaggerated on the other hand when you look at the retail side of the portfolio actually whether it's housing loans or you know car loans and so on in any case the quality of those assets is very stable because the individuals still have their jobs they're sure. still earning and they are still uh, paying for their loans how do you assess the way banks are treating their restructured assets i'm asking this in the context of the new guidelines that have come by from the reserve bank of india uh, is, is that changing the game you know if you look at the experience of the banking sector um actually the migration or the deterioration from restructured to npas has not been very high in the past um in fact for for a bank like ours it's only been 5% of the restructured assets that have finally become npa uh, more than 90% have actually got worked out and really comes out of my belief of uh, of saying that we are a growth economy so i would say that you know even in this current cycle the experience should not be very different from that uh, you know unless we take the economy to a point where we just delay all decisions so much that then the working out of the project just becomes impossible but otherwise 
you know even if we act now we start decisions uh, you know uh, making decisions i think most of these uh, cases uh, should actually get worked out we've seen a flurry of dollar issue, dollar bond issuances by most banks you've had a fantastic uh, issuance yourself why are dollar bonds looking so attractive right now is the inference that the global liquidity tap has opened up as i said there is actually enough liquidity uh, globally and uh, and you know liquidity that is looking for good avenues for deployment so uh, i think that is that is a uh, that that is a fact uh, it's uh, really uh, the issue is in fact we are not getting as much liquidity in uh, as there exists because of the concerns that uh, you know are there um, about the investment environment and so on and the tax environment around the country so i think whenever the investors see an opportunity of a good credit risk that they like mm. um there is there is a great response and we we really were, were very happy with the response that we got for our uh, bond issue actually what about the liquidity in the in the domestic banking system chanda would you say there is enough it, it's comfortable right now uh liquidity actually is uh, i mean structural liquidity is actually quite okay uh, you know um, so i i won't uh, say that there is anything to complain about that mm. but it's just that uh, uh, you know all said and done the costs of deposits have not come down so uh, you know while liquidity exists um, um, the costs are continuing to remain uh, high there is a view that is now coming saying do away with the crr it's unproductive nobody pays interest the, the rbi doesn't pay me interest what's your view on that i mean the fact that there is no interest on crr <laughs> is is well known sure. uh, and the fact that it impacts the profitability uh, is well known uh but i think on the other hand it serves a different purpose which uh, which the regulators uh, have in mind so i think if you just ask me as a banker um you know would uh, payment of interest on crr help uh, i would of course say <laughs> always it would help <laughs> just like you brought the question about uh, or the point about the retail business the retail business clearly has been you know gathering momentum for you do you see that as the growth driver do you see increased competition um in this in this space because everyone seems to be going after what has been fundamentally your domain i think the retail business has actually been growing at very stable levels um, you know when i say industry as a whole uh, which is what i was referring to our demographic dividend that individuals are continuing to earn they're continuing to aspire and therefore they're continuing to build assets so uh, clearly actually therefore uh, i think that our growth will come both from the retail and the corporate side of the business and uh, for the past couple of years we have consciously brought we had rather consciously brought down the growth on the retail side mainly because we were reducing our unsecured retail loans so now that that correction is over and in fact you know our unsecured retail book is a much smaller percentage of our total book uh, we are really back into growing our uh, our retail uh, book and you know the past few quarters you've seen that the rate of growth of uh, whether our housing loans car loans etc has accelerated and yes going forward we would continue to see growth in this business for us how you position yourself in the home loan space what is the strategy what is the game plan there if you look at the product uh, actually it's quite a commoditized product now because you know there's not too much difference uh, in the product really being offered uh, by by various uh, players but i think what matters here is uh, the speed at which you turn around um, uh, the loan application of a customer the efficiency with which you deliver the product and your ability really to have a multiple relationship with your existing set of customers so i think uh for us the the competitive strengths are our distribution network our you know uh, more than 2500 branches our 20 million uh, customer base uh, and the fact that you know our turnaround times etc are are uh, very efficient and fast my last question to you chanda you're you're the the leader of an extremely large organization to your mind what are the risk factors in a volatile environment like this i think the fact that the environment is volatile itself is a big risk factor because i think uh, the issue um, is that you know all we leaders have to realize that as we steer the organization uh, we have to continuously and in a very dynamic manner keep looking at our strategies and keep calibrating them with the way environment moves so i think that is the big change as i would see compared to the yester years where uh you know while you may plan for one year three years and five years um every few weeks there is something different happening in the environment and you have to be nimble and flexible enough uh 
to be able to readjust and re-steer uh, you know, your decision. So, I think that is one of the biggest things. Uh, beyond that, of course, I think uh, the whole uh, issue is that this is the point where you have to manage or balance uh, growth, profitability and risk appetite. So, you, you have to grow uh, because we are a growing economy and I think our, our final growth would co come as, as we all ensure that we all grow. But at the same time, the risks in the environment are developing so quickly and changing so quickly that you have to grow with doing the right amount of risk taking sure. so that you ensure that you know your profitability is maintained. So, I think it is just in this environment, it is even more critical that you find that right balance between growth, uh, risk and profitability. Chandra Khoshar, many thanks for joining us today on Bloomberg. Thank you.